name of the Lord of the Young Leaders? Which African of the TV? Please, can you tell us your name? My name is Ajuka Winifred in PC. I'm saying the man daddy. All right, today we're going to be looking at um, the healing process of an empathy. You know, when um, this incident happened, you have to heal. Now, I would love each and every one of you to share your experience when you woke up from the hospital. Let's start with you. What was your experience when you woke up from the hospital? Uh, I, as far as I was surprised, and I felt pain because my I, my mom told me I asked a lot of questions. She said I was asking where's my leg, where's my leg. But I still went back to sleep. Immediately I woke up. I went back to sleep. When I woke up, I asked for food. Okay. And I was given food. I ate. After then, I asked them what happened. And she said I gave my consent and I was amputated. Okay, so you, you, you were not aware of the application at the first place? I was. Okay, but then the anesthesia minister to you was still working, so you were not really um, kind of in the right sense of yeah. mind. Okay, let's hear you. Okay. When I woke up, I felt I was in a different world. Okay. Because I wasn't, I wasn't seeing clearly first, and the room I was was filled up with so many people so I felt like there was something missing so when I raised up my head I saw that the cat's pillow under my leg I was asking what happened but my mom wasn't able to talk when she was just filled with tears so I forced myself to stand up but I was not able so I went back to sleep Okay, were you also aware that the leg is to be amputated? Yes, but it was very hard for me to give my consent. Yes. All right, let's talk about your healing process. When you left the hospital and got home, were you filled with anger, pain and regret and, you know, asking God, why me, why me? Yeah. Yes, I felt peace to the extent that I didn't come out from my room for a whole week. A whole week you were in your room? Yes. That's serious. Because I felt different from everybody at home. And by then I wasn't strong, so everything, my mom had to help me out, all my young, my siblings so have to help me out. So. And you felt so useless. Yes. What am I doing? God, why me? Nah. Alright, what about you? How did you react when you get home? Huh? <clears throat> Everything wasn't the same because a lot changed. So I had to adapt to my new environment, adapt to every other thing, like maybe from taking my bath, eating, and then doing some house chores. Okay. So from there. Did you also lock yourself up in the room for no, a while? No, no. Okay. Now, we just. I want to know your experience on your first outfit as an amputee. How did it feel the first day you left the house after your amputation? I'm not talking about coming back from the hospital. I'm talking about after the whole thing has happened, the first day you left the house on your own as an amputee. How does it feel? <sighs> I can't explain the feeling because all eyes were on me. Maybe that was, I felt everyone was staring at me. The first outing was, I went to school. Okay. That was, um, I've forgotten the date, but I was to start my work. So on reaching there, everybody came out and all eyes were on me. Everybody was coming to greet me. And it felt good though, but then at some point, some people were trying comments and all of that. I just had to adapt, that's it. Alright, what about you? Your first outing as an amputee, how was it? Wow. Oh, it wasn't good, Sha. Okay, tell us about it. Okay, I was going to school that day on the bike. And uh, unfortunately, we had an accident. Again? Yeah, so I fell from the bike. Which was by the roadside and people were passing, all sorts of things. Yeah, so I got angry and I went back home. Alright, 
So how did you deal with the Eya thing, you know, in Nigeria? <laughs> there is this word they say, Eya, and that Eya is a pitiful word. They say to somebody, they feel pitiful. How do you feel each time you hear the word Eya? Okay, as for me, whenever I go to somewhere, I just tell you, please don't feel pity for me. And I don't want to hear a yeah. Uh, girls treat me like we are the same. Yeah. We don't have any difference. Okay. What about you? How do you feel when you hear the word a yeah? It kills my spirit because even people with two legs, bad things happen to them. That's true. So when something unfortunate happens to somebody, you don't have to say a hey, yeah. Say something that will lift that person's spirit up. All right. So. Talking about things that will lift up your spirit and make you happy. I want to know, as an empathy, um, what actually kept you going? Your family, friends, or neighbors? Which of them kept you going? My family, especially my mom. I love her so much. And whenever I look at her, as far as when everything happened, she wasn't eating. Uh -oh. So I told myself, I have to be strong for this woman. So she was grieving alongside with you? Not that she showed it, but you um, knew I knew, happening. yes. I knew she wasn't eating, she wasn't feeding, but she wasn't doing anything. So I had to be strong for uh -huh. her That's and beautiful. everybody. What about you? Was it family, uh, friends, or neighbors that made you feel good? Oh, uh, my same name was my mom. Your mom? Yes. Super mommies. <laughs> I felt, she felt the pains more than me. Wow. So she always told me that I, my pains are physically for her and yes, yes mm. she can feel it more than me so i always try to be happy so that she will also be happy wow all right you know you need to be strong not just for yourself but for the people around you now was there enough love care and attention by your family friends and neighbors yeah um Yes, like every blessed day, I have to take ice cream before <laughs> before the relapse. That everybody starts calling me ice cream, ice cream. So, um, all right, that's beautiful. Yes. What about you? So sure, there was love, and there is, and there will always be love. That's beautiful. Okay, now let's talk about the attitude people put up when they see a newly applicated person. You see them staring too much, especially here in Nigeria. They can stare. They will stare you to fall. Yeah, they will stare you until you fall down. So, what do you have to say about this attitude people put up? They stare, they make bad comments, and they make you feel like your life has ended. What do you have to say about these things? Amputation. Let me say, in this our society, it's something new, and it will always be something new until maybe the next maybe generation. next generation. So, okay, what do you have to say about it? Um, I I said I take it as is natural human beings. Yeah, uh, stop, right? Yes, so even if you are good, they'll talk. When you're bad, they'll also oh. talk. And I always believe that when they don't talk about you, you are not a human being or you yeah. don't exist. You are not living. That is yes. true. All right, let's look at this aspect of it. Both of you, after your application, you went back to school. Did you have bullies in your school that want to bully you because of the application and say, hey, now she get one leg. I feel bitter. She do not sense how bitter. Do you have such a spirit? People that will be like, uh -huh. now she has one leg. If she misbehaves, now you can beat her easily. Any of such experience? In my school, I will be. You can't believe me when my wow. crushes are around. <laughs> That's serious. <laughs> Even with your application, you were still on top of your game. Yeah. Okay, what about you? None. None. All right. Now, we're going to be looking at... Um, the, how to deal with the pain that comes with application. You know, after the application, there is this inner pain, apart from the physical pain we feel. So how were you able to deal with that pain that comes with application? I told myself, this is your new life. You need to accept it the way it is and adapt and move on. 
So anything I see and I and some people say you can't do it. I try my best to do it so they'll know that there's ability in this ability. Hmm. What about you? As for me, I took it as a born out. So when you are born with something, you get used to it because you came out with it. So you can do all things because that's how you came out. So I tried to do everything. Even when he said, or my mom said, you can't do this. I tried my best to, to do it. Yes, then when I'm even sleeping, she said, go wake up to come and do it because I always love it. All right. Now, do you know that many people shy away of the things they can literally do because of the amputation, because of the fear. How are you able to deal with the fear of amputation? Because it's come with fear. You fall down a lot of times, and then you keep standing, you keep trying, because you must move, you must strive, and you must achieve your aim. How did you deal with the fear of venturing into doing new things as an amputee? Okay. I remember I fall. I knew that I must stand. Uh, for falling is nature. Someone has to fall before to rise. Yes. So even though I fall, I have to rise so that I'll be more stronger and watch my steps. Okay. What about you? Uh, falling is natural. You can't always rely on people to do things for you. So when you fall, you get up and move on with your life. All right. So do you miss your legs? Well, at some point I do, but then I wave off the thoughts. Do you miss your leg? Yes, but not at least. Okay. So, <laughs> what about those shoes? Those beautiful shoes you have. Those two pairs of shoes. So, how do you look at them now? Uh, as for me, I still wear them. You rock. Mm -hmm. Um, the right leg, then in turn the other the other leg. So I always oh, feel beautiful. happy. And it's a good year. <laughs> <laughs> you guys wear the same size. Yes. Oh, yes. This is beautiful. So you found your match, your peer. So that means no pair of shoe is a waste. Oh, yes. I'm so happy for you guys. I'm happy. So whenever you buy a shoe, you know I'm buying for myself and Ensendo. And whenever Ensendo is buying, you know she's buying for herself and Winifred. This is beautiful. Yeah. So, how does it feel always buying, knowing that, okay, I have to give the other leg to my friend and we have to rock this together. How does it feel? I feel very happy because I always call her my pain filler. Mm. So, I feel happy because I'm giving it to someone who feels my pain. Oh. Someone who cares about me. Wow, that's beautiful. So, what about you? Same hair, same feeling. Because when you're sharing with someone you love, you know, you're giving it to someone who will value it. Yes. No matter how small, expensive, less expensive, it's still good. And then when you look at your wardrobe and they're still there, you just get them to her so yeah. that she can rock the other leg for you that you cannot rock. This is beautiful. Mm -hmm. This is very beautiful. I love it. Mm -hmm. Now, I would like you to say a word of advice to every amputee all over the world. Let them understand that though you live in the pain because it's a continual process, you keep healing. It's a daily process. Advise them. What's your advice for every amputee around the globe? My advice will always remain the same. Don't dwell in your past. Whatever happened was meant to happen. Even if you kill yourself, nothing will change. So brace up. Accept any challenge that comes your way because there's ability and disability. All right, what about you? Okay, my advice to them is you should go out, don't keep yourself up, don't stay indoor. Go out, make friends. So from there, you can be happy. Because boredom is a bad sickness yes. and it leads to depression. Yes. All right, are you guys always angry or is it that people think that amputees are always angry? <laughs> People think amputees or persons with disability are always angry. But on the second note, I think they are always angry. That's not the case. That's not the case. So people, let me just say, they feel or believe that that's what it is. So they purposely make you angry to see what you do or your reaction. So and when you react negatively, they will say, hey, I said it. Uh -huh. They are always angry. Okay, what about you? Do you think? Amputees or persons living with disability are always angry. No, 
some people are born with it, short temper. Okay. So it's not as if it's the situation that made them angry. Okay, it's like you are short tempered because you just <laughs> see, see, see it as if are you short tempered? Yeah. Uh, so you can do easily. Yeah, yeah, but I've been trying to control it. Okay, that's beautiful. So does your amputation make it worse or it has been the way it is and you're trying to manage it? At first, but I've managed it. Alright. Alright, now what is your advice for every person living with disability that is living a life of anger? Because this is the general notion that they're always angry, you can't deal with them, you can't have them as friends, they are difficult people to deal with, and in any case you have with them, they will always win because of their disability. What advice do you have for fellow persons living with this physical challenge on anger issues? What is your advice for them? Um, my advice is that go close to them, make friends with them. You don't have to um, just take it that way because you heard people saying so. Now, yeah. your advice is going to the disability challenge persons. Yeah. What do you think they should do to suppress the anger and be able to integrate and um, you know mingle better with people? Okay, like you have to know the person's likes and dislikes. So you should know that yeah, this is what this person like at this time and this is what he or she doesn't like at this moment. And then you avoid yes. those things. And then they should deal with their personal anger. Okay. Yeah. And go. they should avoid the things that trigger that particular anger. anger. You know, if you know that this particular thing makes me feel this way, you as that person try as much as possible to avoid it. All right, that is beautiful. Thank you so much for coming and out living beyond limits with African Amplitude TV. Please, can you tell us your name? I'm saying to our colleague. How do you call me? All right, thank you so much for coming out. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.